Now, if only my talk can keep the level of energy up that high, I'll be successful. So, as you heard, I'm a civic innovator, which is a kind of a weird name for um, the guy who disrupts everything in City Hall. I'm challenging how they do operations, social media, digital strategy, all the things that are the buzzwords of today. And I'm a one-man band, so I kind of get to do it all by myself. But I wanted to kind of talk to you about what it means to innovate in government. We all, I think, as a generation, want to make things better, want to be different, want to make government not suck. And I think we all know it doesn't have to be that way. It's actually, you look around you, like Seiko said, we are all the future of our government. We can make the change we want to be. I've been blessed to have a position in government to where I am able to create my own path, my own projects, do what I want to do. Um, and help leadership become better. So I want to talk to you a little bit about that today. Maybe. So being an innovator is like Sisyphus. We all work in an environment where it's never-ending struggles of bureaucracy, red tape, leadership that's older, doesn't get it, and we constantly are trying to push this rock up this hill. And we all do it in our own way, and whether your job is just handling how to make government operations better, we still have to deal with this struggle every day. And there's no real challenge with that, you have to have this environment. We work in an environment that's not meant to change. And we have to make sure that we have to carry the weight to make those things happen. So I want to talk to you about how you create innovation in government. And I'm going to do, in typical government fashion, I'm going to use an overused, out of date, overplayed analogy of a field guide to herding cats. So we all heard the term, we all lived it and used it every day. And one of the things that's a challenge is that I work in City Hall, so I've got a bunch of directors, leaders that are either appointed people or been lifers. They've been there the whole time and they really don't care about change that much. They just want to make sure the day-to-day -day operations are going. And you get the political people who have agendas, egos, things that they want to get done that they don't really want to hear something new or different. So I constantly see myself being this guy. I've got this box I'm trying to get people of innovation into and a bunch of cats that don't really care what I'm talking about or doing, running around amok. The challenge can be really difficult because if you try to do something innovative and change, whether it be a social media or pushing something with some new technology application or some of us have the struggle sometimes too of trying to get a smartphone used for your own personal use, your bring your own device. So we all have these different things that will make our lives better and we end up running in circles. You see the catch trying to get them where you want to go and they just keep going away. And you have to find a way to make them want to see what you're trying to talk about. So one of the challenges we have with this aspect of of this is you have to get one cat to like you. So in my eyes, well, I'm a I try to get a director and I try to get the cat like right here. And you get all nice and comfortable, get to its level. You know, you've all petted a cat before, so you know what I'm talking about. And they do that for a new cat. You've got to make sure it's soothing words, no sudden movements. Next thing you know, you've got that cat, it likes you. It's rubbing on you, it's petting you back, you have a good conversation back and forth. Leader, not the cat. Um, and through that, then you go say, well, I want to do this again. That was, that was good. I like that. So let's go get another cat. So you walk away from that cat and you get another one. Do the same process again. And you're like, great, I've got two. But then you turn around and that other cat's gone. <laughs> it has no clue what you just did to get it to be comfortable with you. It barely recognizes you. It has no clue what value you had brought to it at the beginning. So now you've got to realize, okay, that didn't work. I've got two things that I thought were going to work, but as soon as I walk away from this cat, the same thing's going to happen again. They're going to forget what's going on. Same thing happens in government. We deal with the struggle of understanding that you can't make somebody do something without it wanting to do that. You can end up chasing the cat, and they'll run away. And with that, you realize that you're never going to make <laughs> the, the impact and difference one at the time. So you can't make a cat do something it doesn't want to do, which is challenge number one. So here's, a, here's a, kind of a scenario for you. Social media and government's a big topic, of course. Nothing new about it anymore because Twitter and Facebook have been around for long enough that everyone knows what it is. But to bring it into a department, communications, etc., you can't pitch social media by itself to a director because it doesn't matter to them. You have to pitch as part of a broader strategy, digital, digital communication. So you have email, telephone, you have all these other projects you're doing that communicate to the public, newsletters, which we all read all the time, and <laughs> all these other effective ways of communicating. So what you have to do is pitch your social media as part of a broader strategy. Don't make it be this one-off. Make it be part of the entire system of this communication process. GovLoop's done a good job with their guide. They have a guide that talks about creating a digital communication strategy and all those things. And so those guides are great tools to help you get some ideas on how to put these things together. But the pitch is this. You can't make that person want to do social media and government without them seeing what they're going to get out of it. 
if you have troubles with customer service, uh, disconnected you know, constituent base, it can be interdepartmental communications not positive. All those things can be a, a benefit you can bring to them by saying, look, let's look at all the ways we communicate together, bring all these people to, in a room to, to, to have a conversation, because what you're gonna say is, social media needs to be added to this, so you're gonna get what you wanna do in the first place, but not saying to them the scary word of social media, in which they're gonna go, don't care, I don't wanna do that. So my point is, you have to find a way to communicate with that cat and make sure that they understand what you're trying to get done in a broader sense, but in a value that they get to appreciate and they want to accept and do their own. Because we all know, they have to have the idea. It has to be their idea. You can't make them do it because you said it. But you gotta convince them that this is what they want to do. So get them to come to you. So how many of you own a cat? I don't, but how many of you own a cat? Okay, I s the lights are kind of bright, but I saw a couple hands move. Um, You've used a can opener with a can of cat food, right? You've used a can, can opener for, for basic food, too. Cats don't know the difference. But that cat will come running up to you. Circle your legs, run all around you, trip you up. It thinks it's getting fed. So the reason why I tell you that is you've got to find a way to kind of create your own way of realizing that you're just the can opener for your cat. You're just there to make them have their own little thing that they can get what they want out of you. Once you give them the food, you're useless anymore. But understand that that's actually a value because what you're helping them do is you're helping them get something that you want to get done. You're getting experience and you're also working on a way to understanding how can I be that can opener for that leader. So one of my things to you too is find your can opener. Find what you can bring to the table that will allow them to want to see that they want to come to you to do something. Because once you get one social media project or some other technology advancement in your department agency, you're able to then roll that forward because now they're like, oh, well, you did it for them. So maybe you can help them over here do it. And you can all of a sudden have a value. Now, granted, you are just going to be the tool that they get done what they want to get out of it. So understand that. Don't seek to be a glorified can opener. If you're going to be the one on the left, good for you. You got to be a can opener. I think the struggle sometimes is we also want to get some praise, don't we? We want to get a little, you know, like acknowledgement for the work we do. But sometimes it's not going to happen. I'm, I'm in a thankless job. I don't really get a lot of public acknowledgement for anything. But what I do understand is I am a tool to help government be better. Whether it's through me or through me helping somebody else get there, the value is what I want to have as the outcome and it's achievable. For me, mine was the IBM Smarter Cities Challenge. I got Richmond to be a finalist. Uh, we were one of 100 cities picked um, from around the world. Um, seven in the US were picked this year. Richmond was one of them. I applied for the project three years in a row. We finally got it. So here's all of a sudden my can opener. All of a sudden, all the directors are like, I want to talk to him. He got this cool project. What, what is this doing? How is this going to help me out? What can, how can I be involved? Can I share what you're working on? Can I, can I give you some of my project to be part of this? Next thing you know, it's like, you ignored me for the first four years of my existence in City Hall, and now all of a sudden, you get an international war for the city, and they're all like, hey, you're not that crazy anymore. So understand that role is fine. I was lucky enough to find my can opener. It might not, your can opener might not be that big, but know that there's a tool you brought, provide and a value that you can create in your environment that you can become a tool for everybody else. Now, the good thing with this project for me is it became... As cats know, you might know what this is. It's not mint. It's catnip. And so, it's, you know, they have fun with that. They, you can't make a cat do anything when there's catnip around. And that's what they do. They just lay in it and have fun with it. You can do the same thing with your leadership. Find a way to get them to be maybe not that comfortable, but <laughs> with you enough to like, appreciate what you're doing. So with this project, you got to understand the, the value and the power of catnip. Now, catnip, of course, is for the cat analogy. I'm trying to keep that going. But you got to figure out, how can I make this thing work so this, this director, this leader, whoever I'm working with, can be that comfortable with me, can accept the change I'm trying to bring, accept the innovation. It's bigger than just the project you're doing. It's more just, how can I help them be this comfortable with what I'm doing? Because you want them to be that way. So when they come talk to you the next time, like the beginning project, when you get that one cat, you want them to be like that when you come around you. And they want to appreciate what you're bringing for them as a value. So this is what I kind of boiled it down to. An innovation project as a whole, I kind of boil it down to four steps to kind of outline how you want to do that. Make a successful plan. I work in a space that's awesome because we have a network of people from all around the country and local governments and counties and cities, and we all want to change and make the lives of our people and our constituents better. And the good thing is we're all willing to share our ideas. We don't own any of the things we do, but we own the ability of sharing the value, the lessons learned, the problems, the success stories, all of it. Use those resources. There's somebody in another agency, another department that's doing, doing the same project you've done, you want to do, and they've already done it. Find that person, contact them. Honestly, they're going to be willing to talk to you no matter who they are. And through that, as you've probably met people here already, we're willing to be that comfortable and talk with each other that way. So 
find a way to make your plan and show the successes from somebody else and be like, well, we should do it because this is kind of a best practice for everybody. We should all do this. And next thing you know, your idea becomes more successful. Next thing, lay out all the resources you need. Give them every little detail, because guess what? They won't read it. But what they will do is go, you got a pretty good plan. Of course, this will work. Make sure you identify the key people. Not too many, but enough to make it happen and be successful. Money, always an issue. If you can avoid it, money. I was given an opportunity. The IBM thing cost nothing. It was great. But there's also a situation where you want to make sure that you can show that you've thought it through that far. So if it costs money, don't be afraid of that. Submit it. It might be part of next year's budget. But make sure that you understand that because of the value they want to do, it's going to make it success for them. Again, go back to the thing. You want that cat to be happy for you, but happy for themselves because they got what they want out of it. Now think about how you can do immediate wins. What are the first steps of things you can do that will be successful? How can you make sure that the first thing that you get this project done on day one, by day five, they're able to see something that's happened with it? Social media is beautiful because you have all these tools that show you logistics and numbers and how many people did something. It's great. So you can immediately show how you're going to be successful with that. Show how results can happen quickly over periods of time. Find touchback points that you want to make sure this is being a growing trend for your project. But lastly, always make sure you make them look good. Make them look just awesome. It's their idea anyway. It's not your idea. It's their idea. Accept that role, and you'll find the value that they will be able to really appreciate for you. So as I'm closing up this thing, last thing I want to talk about is all the points I've kind of brought out here for you is know your cat. Know what's going to make that person, that leader, listen to you. Like I said about the social media example, it's not about social media, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, or whatever else you want to talk about it. It's more about the fact of I'm going to help you reach your people better. I'm going to help you communicate in a broader range of, of, this, of this technology. And it's not by itself going to help everything, but as part of a bigger project, it's going to help make your department look better. Lastly, find out what they like about it. Are they have a problem with something at work? Is there something that they're being dinged on with a survey from, a, from your constituents? Is there something in the press they're getting made, made fun of or being called out for? Use those pain points to make something happen successfully for you. It makes your plan look better, too, if you're able to get rid of some of that, plan, that pain. Plan it all out. You literally have to do all the work. Like with my IBM thing, I had to do all the executive orders, the project plans, the meetings, agendas. I did everything possible, wrote it all out, and I did all the work. All the work, I didn't get my name in the newspaper once. Good, I don't need it. I don't want it. But the city got recognized. Leadership came together. They had conversations they never had before about a topic that we all need to work on. And that value by itself makes my work environment when I go back next week better. Accept that role that whatever you might be doing might not give you any glory, but it's going to give them all the, all the benefits. So next time you come to them, they're going to like you. They're going to want to come back to you. So with that, I'm going to go back to my original picture, maybe. There it is. So we all work in this environment, and we all struggle with the understanding of how we want to achieve innovation, success. And we all know what this looks like. It could be just a mess of cats running around. I don't know what the shepherd's hooks are for. I would never use a shepherd's hook on a cat. But <laughs> I think that's the hurting part. But I think one of the things I want to go is if you listen to what I talked about and the ex examples of what I've done for the past three years at City Hall, the innovating culture you want to create in City Hall is the ability of turning this into this. <laughs> and that's impossible, by the way. <laughs> and the fact that they are able to do that without a laser pointer, beyond me. But I think when you look at this as a whole, this is the environment you want to create is that they're giving you the attention you need to. They're, you're helping support their interests, their values, their principles, what they want to get done, making them look good. And that's pretty much how I think you need to create innovation in government. I have a panel discussion at the next breakout session it's right next door. If you want to hear more, I've got other leaders from around the, uh, the nation and the, and the area that are going to talk about their aspects of creating innovation in government. I'd like for you to hear more. I'd like to see that as well. And if you want to follow me on Twitter or listen to whatever other things that come out of my mouth or my fingers, follow me there too. But thank you. It's been fun.